I know Skylar really enjoys this one, but I have to give myself a little pep talk before I go every time. With over 100 obstacles spanning 14 acres, Triumph offers a unique and exhilarating way to enjoy the Florida outdoors. And in this video, we'll show you the entire Triumph experience from the beginner course number one up to the 60-foot summit. We are here at one of our favorite places in Florida to be out in nature and get in a good workout. But today's adventure does not go as planned, so stick around to see why we get grounded. But before we start the course, we gotta show you how to get here and how to prepare for your adventure. Located on State Road 70, just east of Lakewood Ranch, Triumph is a quick and easy drive from both Sarasota and Bradenton. After you arrive at the property and check in at the front desk, it's time to get geared up and watch a quick safety video. How do you ask for help? Guide, guide, guide. And after learning the rules of the course, you'll learn how to operate your gear. Next, you'll head to the practice area. This is the demonstration area where you show that you know how to work your equipment. And now you're ready to begin the course. All right, good to go. Oh, it's good to be up in the trees again. Walking on our very first bridge back at Triumph. With the exception of the kids course, course number one is the least challenging and the lowest to the ground. Guests must be at least 11 years old and have a standing reach of 69 inches to access this course. So the nice thing about these clickets is that you can only remove one at a time. As you can see, this one will not come off the cable, so you can rest assured that while you're climbing, you will remain attached to the cable as long as you use your equipment properly. Now, if you have super good balance like Jamie, you can try obstacles like this one with no hands to make them a little bit more challenging. I will not be attempting this without hands, but I will try to run the whole way. Now, technically, you can have up to three people on a bridge at a time, so it can get a little more challenging with more people on a bridge at once. Now, if the cables do bother your hands, you can purchase gloves here at Trium, or you can bring your own. We have brought our own, but we haven't had to bust them out yet. We made it to the very first zip line, so I'll see you on the other side. All clear! Those who successfully complete all of course number one can then move on to course number two, the scramble course. And we're gonna show you that course right now. On to course number two, it's just a little bit higher and maybe a little bit longer. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to give it a thumbs up to help our channel grow. So this is the first obstacle that gets a little bit sketchy here on level two. It's not too bad, but it's a bit of a challenge. Also, make sure you wear good fitting tennis shoes. Are you going to do this one no handed? Mm, I guess I'll try. Oh, piece of cake. Skylar's testing out no hands. <laughs> I think it is a little more challenging for taller people though because that cable is constantly hitting your head and you have to kind of bend over more. One thing we love most about Triumph is that no two obstacles are exactly the same and each offers its own unique set of challenges. These ones are tricky, look at how much they move. So when we used to live in Sarasota, we were seasoned pass holders and came here all the time. But we haven't been here in over a year and there are some new obstacles like this one I'm just about to attempt. Like most of the other obstacles on course two, we found this newer obstacle to be quite fun, but not overly challenging. This is a view of most of course two. After completing perhaps the most challenging course two obstacle, guests are rewarded with one of the park's many zip lines, which we find to be a fun way to rest and cool off. All clear! That's a fast one. 
So we just finished course number two and the sun has come out. And while there's a lot of trees and shade on the course, there's also a lot of spots that are full sun. So if you're sensitive to the sun, you'll want to bring your sunscreen, which is what I'm going to get right now. Now, while Jamie takes a sunscreen break, I am taking a water break. You can purchase water passes at the check-in counter, which allow you to grab cold waters from the coolers placed throughout the course. You can also bring your own waters like we've done. So we've made it through the first two courses and now are on course number three, which as you can see is where it starts getting higher. There are a few rock climbing features here, which we love, but this one you have to pull down the rope to clip in and climb all the way up there. So we just heard some thunder in the distance. We're hoping the storms stay away, but there's always a chance they could cut our day short. So we're gonna have to get moving faster through the rest of this course, which means we're not gonna be able to show you every obstacle, but we'll be sure to show you the best ones. But those who try going fast at Triumph may find that it not only makes obstacles more challenging, but also makes them much more exhausting. Wait until the all clear from Skylar. There it is, and here we go. Coming in real hot. This is our first time ever getting lowered at Triumph, and it's due to lightning. We are not quitting voluntarily. <laughs> Do I look sad? We look very sad. <laughs> So there is a thunderstorm coming and they did require us to get off the course. But the good news is that we got to get lowered for the first time and also we'll get to see what their storm policy is. We don't know if they're going to let us get back on the course later, if they'll give us a refund or maybe a free pass for another day. So we just got an update from the manager on the storm and unfortunately it's going to be hanging around for a little bit. So they're going to monitor it for about an hour and then make a decision whether or not we'll be able to get back on the course. If we wait it out and they decide to call it, then we will get tickets to come back on another day for free. If we decided that we were done right now and wanted to head out, then we would get tickets to come back again for half price. And while we were hopeful that this storm would move through quickly, it sure wasn't looking promising. and this storm is going nowhere. It is raining harder and lightning more. So we're getting tickets to come back another day. The rain has lightened up a little bit, so we're able to get to the car after we got our tickets to come back for free. So when we come back, we're gonna go up there to course five and we're gonna finish that summit. We are back at Triumph and I am happy to report that there is no rain in the forecast for at least the next five hours. So with any luck, we'll be able to show you the entire course today. Here we go again. So we did have to restart on course one, but since we covered courses one and two last week, we're gonna zoom through those and we'll pick up where we got grounded on course three. And while we make our way back through the first few courses, we're going to tell you when and how you can visit Triumph. The park is open five days a week from late August through mid-November and is open seven days a week during the rest of the year. The earliest available session is at 8 a.m., with the last available session being at either 11.30, noon, or 2 p.m., depending on the season. You can find updated hours on Triumph.com, which is also where you can book your session. Tickets for purchase include adult tickets, junior tickets, and children's tickets. The website also offers annual passes, group rates, college discounts, and occasional specials such as buy one get one free passes. I bet you didn't notice this. This bridge spells Triumph. We've made it back to course three. Very excited to make it all the way through this time. All clear!
We made it back to the point where we got grounded last time, and it was right before one of our favorite obstacles, the rope swing into the net. So even though this is one of our favorite obstacles, it is one that is like the most scary to me. <laughs> but it's still fun and you should do it. Okay, ready when you are. Don't be scared. So this is a new bridge since the last time we've been here. Oh, you're gonna try to do that on no hand? Look at this show off. Yeah, those boards twist from side to side quite a bit. A little more wobbly than expected. All clear. After one more zip line through the trees, we had completed course number three and were excited to make our way back up to the final two courses. We've reached course four, which as you can see is a bit higher than courses one through three. If you have a fear of heights, this is where it might start getting a little bit sketchy. There's also a minimum standing reach requirement for both courses four and five. Visitors will find that course number four will not only test your fear of heights, but also your stamina, as the climb to access the course alone is quite the workout. There's a little bit of a breeze up here, thank goodness. If you're still enjoying this video and want to see more of the top things to do around the Florida Gulf Coast and beyond, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. I think you're gonna like this next new obstacle. Oh yeah? It's rock climbing. It's our first time trying this obstacle and it's actually pretty challenging. Especially if you're trying just to do the actual holds. I did not do that. I definitely used the holes in the wood. And my foot's not holding. If I had rock climbing shoes, I could do it, I think. Yeah, much easier if you use the holes in the wood. After completing the fun new obstacle, it was time for one of our old favorites, the skateboard. And while this obstacle is perhaps the least strenuous of the entire course, it does require some balance to make it through. As guests make their way through the increasingly challenging course four, many will find their fear of heights or exhaustion to get the best of them. But don't let that keep you from pushing your limits as you can safely be lowered to the ground from almost any point in the course by simply yelling, guide, guide, guide. But keep in mind that once you're lowered, you're not permitted to get back on the course. There's also a new rock climbing wall since we were here last. So we've reached the point where you can finish out course four and be done for the day, or you can go across these crazy things and go up to course five. So I'm making Skylar do this obstacle first because it's new and I'm not confident in my abilities to do it. It looks a little challenging. Yeah. And while Skylar did make it through, I still wasn't too confident. Start right hand on that green one, left hand, yeah, left hand there. Then go left hand to that green one, right hand to this green one, and then just swing to the finish from there. That sounds like a great plan. <laughs> You can. There you go. You're good, you're good. Keep going. Oh, no. Go. You gotta go. Oh. Darn it. All right, we're hey, good. you tried. Made it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm still proud that I did it. So they do really make it a challenge to get up to course five. We have to climb up all of these to the obstacles on course five. Once you figure out how to climb them, it's not that bad. But like Skylar said, you really want to climb with your legs and not your arms because otherwise these things can burn you out before you get to five. Look at this tree hugger. Works the best. Here's what we climbed up to get up here. 
We made it to the summit. Skylar is tightening up his shoes. We've got several obstacles to make it through so we can ring the bell to signify that we have finished the summit. You can do this. Oh, Skylar says, oh, I know. Look at how high we are. Skylar said this is one of his favorite spots to take a break. I'm sure a lot of people would not agree with him, but it does have a nice view. You're just gonna try to swing to the big one? Yep. All right, hold tight and high. Good job. All right. Made it. Significantly harder than four, I'd say. On this one, you've gotta go from a net to a hanging board with holes in it, back to a net. You look so relaxed out there. Oh no, your foot is stuck. So this is where we've come from, and here is where we're going. While there are certainly no easy obstacles up on course number five, some obstacles do provide good resting spots to take in the amazing views. However, this obstacle known as the Man Makers sure isn't one of them, as it's considered by many to be the most physically challenging of the entire course. <laughs> you got all tangled up, didn't you? Yeah. That's all right, you fixed it. This is like the longest two minutes ever. Those are hard. Woohoo! Great job! Not gonna lie, I'm really not looking forward to this obstacle. Skylar made it through, but oh, it's so tough on your hands. Got a little tougher there. I honestly wasn't sure if I'd be able to do that. If you're one of the few who can make it through the Man Makers, you'll have just two more challenging obstacles to go before completing the summit. What do you think? Would you spend a day up in the trees at Triumph? Or would you prefer to observe others while safely on the ground? Let us know in the comments. Dad has officially finished the summit. Ring that bell! Yay. Now that we're done with the summit, we have to climb back down to finish out course four. Even not very hard obstacles are hard at the end, aren't they? Let's finish this out. Let's do it. Oh, that was a nice breeze after five. There's two more obstacles left to finish out course four. This bridge thing, and then there's an the area that you can kind of like free fall. So for the last obstacle on course four, you get to choose to climb down a ladder or walk the plank. And I'm sure you already know which one Skylar chose. Oh my gosh, there he goes. <laughs> Come on, my arms are getting sore and my phone's getting hot. So we finished all five courses and made it back down to the ground, but we still have one more thing to do and that's the big zip line, so we'll see you up there. Final zip line. Alright. They have two side by side zip lines, so we can go at the same time. Three, two, one, go. After ending your day at Triumph on this exhilarating 650 foot zip line, 
You may want to explore one of the neighboring cities, and you can do that by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.